So thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, I'm your host uh, for this beautiful evening. Uh, we were just chatting it up with Angel Williams, uh, catching up after uh, a long spat that I've been away. Um, but I'm back now and uh, Carlos 2.4 is here uh, to stay. <laughs> so you guys, thank you so much for joining us. This is Multifamily Investor Nation Monday Meetups. I'm your host once again. Uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about how do you make money as a multifamily syndicator? Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Do you see uh, how do you make money as a multifamily syndicator, Angel? Hold on. Zoom has done crazy stuff to me, but yes, I, I do. Okay, cool. And it's got Ash at the bottom, perfect, you and yeah. Ash and the best ever real yeah. estate investing advice. Yeah, uh, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to tell you like uh, Joe, Joe is awesome. Like when it comes to his knowledge, his wisdom, uh, you know, just how like it, pretty much if he's in a deal, like that deal is going to go forward. I mean, I, I doubt zero on that, you know? Um, and, you know, it's funny because up to now, let me see, if maybe it's that. Okay, that's what it was. Because it's on a different screen. I have a brand spanking new computer, oh, so I'm still gotcha. getting used to it. Yeah, yep. so appreciate that. So yeah, uh, today's topic is how do you make money as a multifamily syndicator? And uh, who am I? And uh, why are you here today, right? Uh, today's topic is uh, is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, basically, what I am trying to achieve is uh, syndicate my own deals. I have over 20 years experience uh, as a realtor in the real estate uh, space. I've also done my own five and six unit uh, investments back in Miami, Florida. Um, I disposed of those back in 2003, between 2003 and 2005. Um, I am the founder and CEO of Canis Major Investment Capital, LLC. I'm a managing and general partner. I'm also a capital raiser. Angel, we were just uh, talking about that. And an equity partner. Uh, I was an equity partner on a 240-unit 506B offering in San Antonio, Texas. And I call that one the one that got away because uh, we did have it under contract. Uh, we did raise most of the capital, but at the end, the deal just fell through. Uh, lessons learned through the experience and we move on until you know we finally achieve our our own syndications um, i'm the author of the book selling secrets you can't afford to miss uh, basically a book that i wrote to give back to the single family industry it's actually on it right here maybe you could see it with the background and everything <laughs> yeah so that's as good as you're going to see it with my background um, and basically, you know, like I said, it's a book that I wrote for, um, the single family industry, uh, that was been so great to me over the past 20 plus years. Uh, I was recently interviewed on the best real estate investing advice ever podcast with Joe Fairless. And this one happened to have been with Ash Patel. Ash is a great interviewer. I strongly, highly recommend if you're ever going to be interviewed on their show, uh, definitely go with Ash. He was great. A lot of fun. And you can see here, we were all giggles. We kept laughing and it was hard to focus sometimes because we had so much fun. Um, what happened there, ladies and gentlemen? Well, soon, there we go. And, <laughs> and so here you have uh, a photo, uh, myself, I'm in the bottom middle uh, of that photo, if you will. And uh, you also have Michael Blanc on there. These are people that were interviewed on the same week that I was. Cool. And my topic, cool, thanks. My topic was five tips to boost your online network and find investors with yours truly, Carlos Di Reynoso. All right. And uh, this was the summit. So you guys, just so you know, every year, Multifamily Investor Nation has a summit twice a year. Uh, the first time is in um, January and the second one in June. Um, usually it's toward the last week of the month, and it's usually Thursday through Sunday. Um, I highly recommend it. You're going to have over 300 experienced investors, Angel included. Um, Dan Hanford and the Passive Investing team are also going to be there. Uh, multifamily Investor Nation and their group is going to be there. My group is going to be there, Canis Major Investment Capital. Um, the previous years, we've also been uh, uh, moderators on the Raising Capital, and you'll, you'll see a little bit more here. 
on that. And here you go. I was raising capital. I was the moderator for the panel on raising capital, finding money for your real estate deals. And that was great. We had people like Chris Larson um, and a bunch of other great investors join us on that chat. Uh, one, when you guys do sign up for Multifamily Investor Nation Summit, um, you also get um, previous recordings as well. So just so you know, uh, you haven't missed anything yet. So as long as you sign up for the next one in January, you'll also have access to previous recordings as well. All right. Uh, this is the next intensive that's coming up. Uh, this is this is for those people, uh, real you know syndicators that are actually out there and are doing deals, and they want to learn a little bit further on you know what they could do um, as far as the asset management is concerned. And Brandon Abbott, uh, he's one of the part of the managing partners of PassingInvesting.com. He's going to be available and you know kind of going over what him and and his asset management management team do for passiveinvesting.com. It's a great event. I highly recommend it. Let's see if we could click here and get more information. So here you have um, Brandon Abbott um, and members of passiveinvestingteam.com. Let me see. There you go. And I'll just let you guys view this for a quick second. Let me get more information on it. Actually, come out of this video. Watch them on the right hand side. Come here. These are all the investors that were there on the first summit. Irish is there. He was supposed to come today. Oh, Dan is here, Angel. Dan Freidenberg. There I am in white on the right. Yeah, this is going to be a great event. I'll just stop it there, but you guys should definitely go ahead and register. It is a little pricey because it's it's mostly for the serious a syndicator, people who are actually doing deals right now, but I highly recommend it. I went to the Raising Capital one, and I think within a few months time, I was raising capital on a deal and I was invited to raise capital on that deal. Um, so I highly, highly, highly recommend um, that you show up to these events. Um, okay. All righty. And back to the show. Here we go. So we were here. And I keep losing my presentation for some reason. Oh, I see it. Okay. So yeah, that was the intensive that's coming up November 14th through the 15th, uh, basically next Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so we hope you guys would join us for that. Uh, make sure to sign in with your, I don't know what happened with Dan. I let him in. He's at the bottom. Oh, okay, cool. You see him? Okay. Hey, Dan, I don't see you right now, but hopefully I'll be able to pull you up in just a second. There you are. And Aaron, thank you so much for joining us as well. As you guys are coming in, uh, you know, uh, feel free to share your contact information in the chat box below. Um, and today we're going to be talking about uh, how you make money as a multifamily syndicator. Um, you can check me out uh, in other videos related to the topic on my YouTube channel. Just go to Carlos D. Reynoso for my YouTube channel. Um, you could also um, uh, check me out on other social media sites such as, uh, oh, and, and YouTube, please like and subscribe. Maybe leave a, a comment if possible. That'll help with the algorithm. You could also find me on LinkedIn. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now also on TikTok. Um, join us once again for the Multifamily Investor Nation Summit uh, coming up in January. And the intensive coming up, you can use my promo code. That's uh, Canis100 or just Canis, C-A-N-I-S. Um, that'll save you $100 off the price of admission. All right, guys. So without further ado, today's topic, how do you make money as a multifamily syndicator? 
Uh, we're going to talk about the most common fees and then the least common fees. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try to just, you know, kind of glance over that. Um, but what I really want is an opportunity for us to network as well. So uh, right after the meetup, please stick around for more networking opportunities. And everyone who does put their contact information here at the bottom will receive a uh, getting started in multifamily uh, investing, uh, multifamily syndication video. So definitely um, put your information in the chat box, give us your email information, and we'll make sure to get that video out to you. So the main fee is the acquisition fee, and you're basically looking at a fee from 1% to 5%, uh, and that varies depending on the size of the deal. So obviously, the larger the deal, the smaller the, the, the percentage. And the smaller the deal, the larger the percentage. Um, and uh, the costs are offset by the, um, oh, the larger the, okay, the, the cost is, goes toward offsetting the cost that it takes to put a deal together. Um, there's also the asset management fee that this is another fee that you could you could get as a syndicator. And in order to get an asset management fee, uh, you definitely want to um, either A, be the one in charge of managing the property or managing the property manager, or uh, you'll have a property management company in place and they could handle that and, you know, they could do that for you. Um, uh, it's paid annually, usually a two, uh, two to five percent or based on a total equity required to acquire the property. Um, uh, and it's based on the overall gross collections of the asset. So uh, this is most commonly either one to three percent um, a fee that you're charging um, as an asset management. Uh, your disposition or refinance fee. So the disposition fee is when you go ahead and you sell the property. Uh, you you know you had a value add, you made all the repairs, you got the property up and running and now you're ready to sell. That should be anywhere from one to 3%. As a realtor, I would also um, share in that commission as a syndicator or, or not. Again, that is negotiable like any other uh, um, um, terms in real estate, everything is negotiable. But the disposition fee is, again, when you sell the property and then you have the refinance fee. And then sometimes, a lot of the times, and I can tell you most of the times, uh, in syndications, when um, the property has made good profits and it's been, you know, over two years um, or more, um, that has been profitable, and if the interest rates are right and the market conditions are correct, it's a good time to refinance. Right now, it's not the best time, obviously, because the interest rates are, you know, higher than they've been in the past uh, 20 to 40 years. But it is still um, good to know that within a syndication, you could get a, a fee uh, once you refinance for handling you know, the legwork that goes into that. There's also the property management fee. Um, obviously, you're going to have to have property management. Like when you have 100 units or more, it's not something that you could say, oh, I'm going to manage 100 units on my own. I've been in a I've been in a property manager. I've been an assistant property manager. I've been in charge of an entire property, um, and I can tell you firsthand that one person alone will not be able to cover it. You need maintenance people. You need a maintenance supervisor. Uh, you need assistant uh, leasing agents, uh, and so on and so forth. You need accountants, CPAs, uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, but definitely a team effort. Um, to to property manage, and it's it's looked favorably with the banks. When a bank sees that the property is well managed, um, one, it's going to increase the property value, but two, it's going to help the the banks kind of come at ease and and feel that um, this property is being well maintained and it's going to continue to be profitable for years to come. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, the varies by size of the assets. So less than 100 units, the interest, the yeah, the 
the the interest can be anywhere from five to seven percent paid uh, for property management, and as much as ten to twelve, depending on the market and how many property management uh, options are available in that market. So if, obviously, if that's you know the monopoly, if that's the only company handling hundred plus units in your area, then you know there's not a lot of competition. So you're going to have higher uh, rates. And the larger assets typically typically have a lower rate, three to five percent, uh, due to paying for uh, on-site property management. Uh, let me go back here. Okay, uh, the less common fees would be the broker commission. And again, if you're a real estate broker like myself, uh, you purchased um, the the purchase is charged to the seller. And you, you're, you know, you're able to get a commission for that. But when you're thinking about commissions, one thing I'd like you guys to keep in mind is that you want to favor the investors. You want to make sure the investors are benefiting from the investment. And if they're happy, chances are they're going to want to continue to come back. Um, so you don't want to overcharge a bunch of fees. Try to stick to the bare minimum fees. Obviously, we have to make, you know, our money off of, you know, our hard work and the legwork and the being boots on the ground and and all that that goes into um, syndicating your deals. But we definitely want to make sure um, that we don't overcharge on fees either. Um, yeah, again, the broker gets a commission for selling the, the property. Construction management fee most commonly falls under property management fee. Um, so, you know, if, if there's a lot of construction, sometimes you'll buy a building and there'll be like some burn units. And in that case, you're going to have to do some major construction on the property. So in that case, that falls under the management fee, uh, the property management fee. So that would be included there. Um, another less common fee is accounting and tax fee uh, for time spent on bookkeeping, document preparation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, syndications are usually going to make the most money upon exit. Again, that's on the disposition. And proceeds from the sale of the asset, the splits and the waterfalls, uh, are, you know, it's something that goes into further detail. Um, but it's basically the splits between the investors, uh, the limited partners, and the general partners on the deals. And all fees should definitely be outlined, disclosed in the PPM. Okay, uh, we got some more people coming in here. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. Next month's topic is gonna be raising capital for multifamily deals or to be determined, it all depends on, uh, you know, just how Many times have we reached the topic of raising capital. I've personally um, um, presented on this topic over four or five times in the past uh, three or four years. So uh, that's my presentation for today, guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or just reach out or put them in the chat box. I'll be uh, searching both the chat box and looking for hands raised. Here's my contact information. Let me see if this kind of, oops, yeah, <laughs> we got lost again, right? <laughs> and uh, this is the other one, okay. Yeah, my contact information here, um, let's see here, yeah, my business page. That brings up a, a point, and Angel, I'll, 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 I saw you raised your hand, so I'll definitely get with you in just a second, or you didn't? I, I could have sworn. I need to ask a question. I know I something. <laughs> yeah, you're good at questions, right? <laughs> no, I was going to say that. Um, speaking of websites, uh, I highly recommend as a syndicator or as a capital raiser or just a business professional um, that you do get yourself a, a nice um, website uh, where people could go and find out more about you. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I started my website and I still haven't been able to to keep it updated, uh, but it's something that I'm definitely working on. I'm definitely working on uh, more material for my YouTube channel and for this meetup. 
and also an opportunity to meet uh, you guys in person as well. Um, again, I did go to Texas uh, the month of June, um, went to Houston, San Antonio, and Austin, beautiful state, definitely want to go visit again. Um, great people. Um, the barbecue was off the chain, uh, really was delicious. Um, and I hadn't been eating meat in a while, so it, it just, it had all the better flavors for some reason. So that was great. Um, and yeah, you guys, any questions anyone would like to ask on the topic? Um, just want to say it's a pleasure to, to have you guys here today. Um, it's really nice seeing you. It's been a while since I see, um, you know, some of you guys. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's really nice to, to have you uh, join me. And, and I thank you for your support. Okay. I have a question. Please. Yes, by all means. How are you doing, Carlos? I'm doing you great. And yourself, Erin? I'm doing pretty good. Awesome. I can't complain. Awesome. Uh, uh, my name is Erin. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, I think. Right? Is everyone here in Atlanta? No, I am. Uh, Angel's in Texas. And Dan, I believe, is... He's in Canada. Canada or in another oh. country somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I'm a fairly, like I said in the chat, I'm a new syndicator. It's me and another uh, business partner, uh, one of my college uh, friends. So we've been going through like a mentorship program process and have our business set up and it's really just focused on networking as much as possible, uh, you know, building those relationships. I think one of our biggest hurdles is, you know, finding the right team members. So I guess I'm wondering, what your process is like finding your your team members or your joint ventures, like who you decide to work with. And then the second question is your best ways to break through with brokers, I guess, for those market deals. I got you. That's a, those are two great questions. So to break through with brokers, I would definitely go to this asset management, um, excuse me, um, intensive coming up. 14th through the 15th, uh, because that's exactly what the, the theme is, right? So Brandon is the uh, the asset manager for uh, PassiveInvesting.com, and he's going to be uh, deep diving into that <clears throat> along with his asset management team. And let me tell you from what I've gathered over the years of being mentored by MFIN and Brandon and everybody else at the Passive Investing team is that <clears throat> these people have a system down packed. And I think that's one of the things you definitely have to have is a system. You got to have like a machine that pretty much runs on its own oil and you got to have the, the team. Now, how to come about the team, I'll be honest with you, that's an awesome and very difficult question to answer. And the reason why is because I myself have gone through that. And, and those who know me know that I've kissed quite a few frogs, right? trying to get, trying to get to know my people, right? My investment team. And I do have, you know, I have my syndication attorneys lined up, right? I do have investors that I could bring deals to lined up, you know, good friends of mine. But what I don't have is that full core team that I could say, all right, this is, you know, like passiveinvesting.com is Brandon, Danny, and Dan. You know, I don't have where it's Carlos, whatever angel and Aaron in our team, we don't have the complete managing partner team, but how to find them. And I think this is going to help answer that question is first of all, getting the word out there about you and about what you're doing. Right. So you're an investor, right? If you hadn't told me right now that you're a, a new syndicator, I wouldn't have known anything about you. I wouldn't have known that you're syndicating, right? So that's what's that's what's awesome. You're telling me, by the way, this is going to be on YouTube, um, and it's great because you know, it's going to be edited, and you know we're going to let people know um, what it's all about, and you're going to get the word out there, right? So now people know that you're syndicating as well. So I would get the word out in social media. I would definitely uh, network on LinkedIn, and mm -hmm. and I always say, you know. I have a lot of great investor friends. You know, you could check with, with me before, but you could reach out to my investor friends and, you know, you could say, hey, Carlos, 
I, you know, I was talking to Carlos on his meetup and, you know, he, he was talking to me about you and he said I could check out his friends and, you know, and kind of open up to people. Right. And give me just a second. I'm going to show you a book. And if you look at this book, this is Joe Fairless's book, right? Um, oh, hold on. I don't know what to do here. Um, let me, um, if I can get, if I could stop presenting. Okay. No, not, st never mind. I'll do it later. But anyway, here's, here's Joe Fairless's book, best ever apartment syndication book. It's, it's like a Bible. It's really thick. But this book is like soup to nuts about everything you need to know about syndicating including a thought leadership platform, which is what I'm doing here at this meetup. And also, you know, how to get your word out there through social media, through books. You know, and I was telling Angel, I have my own book that I wrote, Selling Secrets You Can't Afford to Miss. Um, mm -hmm. And just anything you can, Aaron, to get the word out, because people need to know. <clears throat> and you'll see another theme that we talk about is, no like and trust so first they got to before they trust you they got to get to know you right so i think that's the way you start your team you start getting the word out you start just letting everybody know hey i'm a syndicator i'm looking for deals and this is what i'm looking for and this is what i bring to the table and by the way we should definitely talk afterward um because you never know we might have some synergies uh together and also um, because, you know, if there's any questions that I could answer, any other questions, whatever, I'm an open book, whatever I could do to, to guide or to share, whatever I'm all for it. So great questions, by the way, literally. Thank yeah. you for having us. I'm, I'll reach out to you for sure. Or an email. Yeah, cool. And where, where in, in Atlanta are you? Like what city specifically? I'm in the city of Atlanta, like within two. Oh, Atlanta five. proper. Awesome. Awesome. Real Atlanta. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's real uh, true. That so I'm looking I'm looking for investment deals in Atlanta proper myself, right? No, so anything from like a hundred plus units, mm -hmm. um, and preferably syndication. Or you also mentioned joint ventures, uh, that's fine too. Um, okay. The good thing about joint ventures is it's not as expensive, and it takes a little bit less paperwork because you don't have to create a PPM for that. It's a lot simpler to do. So yeah, okay. yeah, that's All great. Right. Uh, hold on. We got 10 chats here. Oh, we got lots of chats. <laughs> Was that, oh, the, I haven't, I haven't been able to see all of them. Yeah. Uh, so I like the, I like the slide that puts the, like the common, the common ways that syndicators make money and had like the, the ranges. Yeah. That one's yeah. really good because I think that we hear a lot of times that, you know, a 2% asset management fee is insane or a two percent acquisition is insane mm -hmm. but if it's a smaller property that's not even that big of a deal exactly because like we exactly. our first property was um five million and with a two percent acquisition fee there were five or there were four different groups and so that was like forty thousand dollars <laughs> like it wasn't it yeah. wasn't some big massive amount of money and we only did one deal that year and we only have one deal this year and and so when you're when you're having to be really cautious and careful, I think it's really good to see things like this that give you a whole spread so that you don't feel like you're, I mean, I feel like sometimes you're made to feel like you're stealing from people if you take a bigger acquisition fee, but I don't think that's the case at all because getting a deal across the finish line is tough. It takes a lot Yeah, and there should be compensation for that. I totally agree. And let me say this, that sometimes you'll see where you have just, my battery's dying, where you have just one, um, oh, I lost what my train of thought, what I was saying. Oh yeah, you know, how, how expensive some of these deals, you know, how much work goes into it, right? And so let's say to get a deal from zero to closing, that's one thing. And that's that's a task all on its own. But imagine that before you got to that deal that you're about ready to, to process into closing, you had another 20 deals that you had to analyze. You had another 100 deals that you had to analyze that you still, you know, that didn't, um, it, it didn't work out, right? The deal fell through. You might have been like right about to close and something happened, like what happened with us. Or you could be, you know, just getting started and 30 days into it and you've lost hard money. And you've lost. So, yeah, I definitely think 
you know, you got to make your profit on the deals because especially these days with the higher interest rates, it's hard to, to, to show um, just how much uh, profits, right? The profits are lower, obviously now with a lower, in, with a higher interest rate, right? So that's a great point, Angel. And yeah, if you guys want to feel free to take a screenshot of this, you guys. Um, and this is very I accurate. Already this, did. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> this is basically uh, straight from Dan. I, I basically copied what I learned from him. And I'm, uh, that's what I'm sharing with you guys today. We got more people showing up. Um, so we're definitely going to try to do the, um, the, um, the, net, the networking. So we'll do the breakout rooms. Uh, let me see, Jason. Okay. Oh, those are just people that I know that are, also I gotcha. in, um, they're in the Atlanta area. Jason Stubblefield though, he does, um, he does the, uh, I can't even think now affordable housing. Yeah. And so it's a different kind of setup. The, like the way I understood it was that like it's syndicated on the front end, but it's short, like 18 ish months. And then it goes to an institution. That's a weird one. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool though. But that's great because he's got his own little niche, right? What he's doing. And that's awesome. Yeah. And then like Joseph Jackson is doing the mobile home communities. They got one in Georgia that I want to say it was, it must've been down by the Gulf because I think that it like the, went through some of the hurricane stuff maybe. Yeah. Or I may be thinking of a different one, but they got one that had gone through some strife with that and got some owner, owner financing for it. And then I just met Matrice. Um, he was at an event that I was at in Phoenix and he's in the same area. <laughs> he wants to do some investing there too. So here in Georgia. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, Georgia, seriously, you talk about a place that's saturated with investors, Georgia. I mean, you could invest in Texas primarily, right? You could invest in Ohio primarily. And you're still looking for properties in, in Atlanta, in Georgia proper, in Atlanta proper. And so, yeah, it's definitely a hot market. So is Florida. Um, and, and yeah, you know, especially like what I've learned over the years, when the market shifts, the way it's shifting now, right, you kind of have to be able to adapt in order to stay alive in the market. You can't continue doing things exactly the way you were doing it before. You got to kind of adapt. If the interest rates are higher, well, then you think, okay, in the future, uh, I might be able to refinance out of it, right? Or, um, you know, try to do where there's less value add or try to get it at a discount if possible, you know, buy a foreclosure if you can. Um, so, yeah, you got to try to adapt to the market. And that's one of the things that I, you know, I pride myself in doing and I've done in real estate for many, many years is working with uh, short sales and foreclosures. And, you know, that's one of the many things. But when you do short sales and foreclosures, sometimes the deals take longer, but uh, you're, you're, you're getting it for pennies on the dollar, right, uh, in comparison. So um, definitely a niche market, definitely, you know, for the experienced investors. Not every, not everybody could could jump into it, but uh, it's I think it's it's a beneficial market to jump into uh, whenever you have a chance. Okay. I'm looking through my LinkedIn too. I know I have I know there's other people that are, <laughs> that yeah. are there also. Oh, you know who I was just talking? I just saw you, Angel. Uh, we were looking at because uh, I'm part of David Monroe's. Um, oh yes. Yeah, mentorship program, mm -hmm. and. Um, I remember I was just looking at one of the uh, recordings and you were on there. And, uh, and, and so I was thinking about you not so long ago. I was thinking about David and, and Dan and. Well, he does and, that one where he like does market demand and he like actually does the mathematics to find market demand. That's all, that's an awesome. That is one. my, that is my favorite thing that he can do. And I'm just like, I, I love that, that he does that the market and he tells you exactly where to go and you could do the whole thing. And like, brief and like you can break it down to like households like what yeah. is the household demand oh okay well so if i know that apartments are already here and i know that these apartments are at this level of occupancy then what does that mean for the leftover demand right yeah and, and he knows i mean he he's he's got that down to a science and and for those who don't know david monroe is also a ccim instructor uh a lot of people coming in that's basically a designation um for real estate um, 
for real estate brokers. Um, and it's basically, I mean, it's nothing to, to cough at. Basically, you have to analyze markets and analyze deals, and you have to be able to do it on the cuff, right? Just here's a deal, back of the market, here's the, the information, give me the numbers, is this a deal worth it? Uh, why or why not? And so he's awesome at that. So yeah, he's my mentor right now. I'm in the group. I haven't had as much time as I wish to, to participate, but I'm gradually trying to get back into, uh, you know, spending more time with the group. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. This is a multifamily investor nation Monday meetups. I'm your host, Carlos D. Reynoso. Um, I am a general manager, managing partner and capital raiser. Uh, we're currently discussing how to make money as a multifamily syndicator. Uh, this was the main um, terms that we came up with as far as the most common fees and the content on the other page, which is the uh, least common fees. Um, and we're just pretty much uh, chatting it up and answering any questions that might arise. Okay. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the breakout rooms if I could get this. Uh, my apologies. I, I did want to mention this is a brand, brand, like just out the box yesterday uh, computer. Um, I did set everything up, but I'm trying to see how I could jump into my breakout rooms. And I first got to find my Zoom. So I'll stop sharing for just a brief moment. Stop share. Okay, there we are. And... Uh, there's no breakout rooms here? So they moved where it is. Um, oh. <laughs> they do this all the time. I've been out for three months now. I know. I was gonna say, if you've got three dots on the bottom, click More. on the three dots. Yeah. And it should be like the second thing down. Breakout rooms, see it. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's why it's good to have the pros with you when you're doing this. No, I had a meetup this morning. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's the same thing. I was like, where? Breakout room. All right. So if I if I would have been there today, I would have learned that already. That's great. Um, let's see here. Join. All right. Here we go. Uh, we're going to the breakout rooms now. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, the recording follows you when you go to a breakout room. <laughs> I love that. That's new, right? Because before it didn't. Um, I think I don't know. No, you I see it record. says it here. You cannot minimize Zoom when you're recording the meeting. Okay. Could I maximize? Yay. <laughs> hey, you live and learn, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so yeah, this is a breakout room, guys. Uh, today's topic again was how do you make money as a multifamily syndicator? Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, or even better, better than questions, excuse me. Let's if we can, let's go up around the room, kind of introduce ourselves. Uh, we usually do it at the beginning of the show, but um, we only had about four people with us. So let's go ahead and introduce ourselves and just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're currently doing in the multifamily space. And who would like to go first? Angel, go, first. go ahead. <laughs> All right, um, I'm Angel Williams. I am the face of our educational platform. Um, it's the Academy Presents Real Estate Investing Rocks. And yes, having a platform is very, very important. Um, Joe could be my coach. <laughs> and so I'm kind of doing what he told me to do, or he didn't actually tell me to do it, but having, having a thought leadership platform is super, super important because it positions you in, um, in a spot of expertise as you're gaining knowledge on your own. So that. that's what, that's what we've really enjoyed about it. Um, we became active side GPs in December of 21. We did one deal in 21. We're probably going to have one deal in 22. If we can get it across the finish line for the end of the year, that's the fight right now. Um, and we're just, we like investing in our backyard. We're in Wichita Falls, Texas. It's like two hours from the Dallas Fort Worth area. It's about two hours from Oklahoma city and we like it. And we think it's very stable. We've been investing residential side here for 15 years. Um, and so that's, nice. that's what we came from. We've been in residential for about 20 years now. And so we have, we've stacked multifamily in there too. And I, I like going to things and meeting people and I will try and think of more Georgia people. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, and when, when I first met Angel, she was already a passive investor. 
uh, looking to syndicate her her deal. And you know, it's great when you have friends and, and relationships that you're building over the years because you start getting to know these people and you see them succeeding and and doing better. And and I, I'm the kind of person I love that man. I I wish it for you. All the best for you for everybody who's syndicating. So. Um, congrats to that. You know, you've come a long way from passive to, to now doing your own deal. So, and your, at your first deal, um, can you tell us, well, we'll get back to that, but I want to go further into that one. Cause that was a okay. great deal. Right. Yeah. Anybody else uh, want to go ahead and share a little bit about themselves? Uh, sure. I'm Douglas Dow. I'm a, uh, a capital raiser uh, on the development side and I just now, uh, been, uh, fortunate enough to, uh, meet someone to uh, teach me gap funding. So I'm going to be doing some gap funding work and uh, really enjoying it so far. Cool. So gap funding where you're providing the capital? That's right. We're going to uh, provide capital from uh, about 20% to the goal line. So if, you're, if they're real close to the goal line, but just not quite there yet and want to protect their deal and their hard money, uh, the money that's gone hard in the deal, um, we can go ahead and lend the... Uh, the gap and then they can go ahead and keep raising to pay us on out and get us back out of the deal so gotcha that's beautiful yeah i like that setup i've done that setup myself and it works really well yeah. that setup actually helps because yeah. you you end up raising less capital so it makes the transaction go by a lot smoother and you get the capital raising out of the way uh, right away so that's Great. right and uh want to thank angel for inviting me and then i invited rick so we we uh we were in the middle of a call and I'm like, wait a minute, Angel invited us to a meetup. Let's go. That's awesome. Thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Rick, if you want to also, I see that you clicked on your screen. Well, Aaron's been trying to introduce. Oh, I'm so sorry. Aaron, because <laughs> we had already heard from Aaron, but please, please, by all means. It's all good. I was excited to hear about Angel's first deal too, because I am uh kind of going along the same route, trying to go from passive to active and looking for our first GP deal. Um, we're like a two person group. I have put in the chat D1 Capital Group mm -hmm. and we're both in the same mentorship program and we are alone. We're trying to focus on 20 to 50 unit for our first deal. But if we were to partner, we're looking for you know 50 plus and trying to be boots on the ground for people uh, if they want to be in Georgia. Because we know a lot of investors that are out of state who are interested in this market. Yeah. Uh, so just being able to help with due diligence, capital raising, we're basically building up our soft commitments right now, meeting with investors. So we know how much our buying power is. And yeah, just networking, meeting with brokers, coming to events like this to learn from people who are doing it. That's awesome. Yeah, you're definitely in the right place, Aaron. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, and what did you do before this, Aaron? What was your occupation before syndicating? Well, still my W-2. I'm a 12-year firefighter, uh, lieutenant and paramedic with the Atlanta Fire Rescue. So My grandpa was a fireman. Your grandpa? Your grandpa yeah. Good man. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for your service. That's really great. That's really great. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, who wanted to go next? Rick, if you would, please. Uh-oh, you're still on mute. You're muted. Oh, I said, oh, it didn't show. Sometimes it shows on the screen. Okay. Yeah. I'm Rick Ward. I'm in Boise, Idaho, relocated a couple years ago from the Bay Area. And um, I was going down the syndicator path and focusing on Texas and Tennessee. And then an opportunity was offered to me to acquire an existing fund of funds that has deals and investors already in it. What? And I was thinking of going that direction anyway. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm part of Hunter Thompson's uh, Raise Masters. I've also been for a year and a half um, with the uh, multifamily mindset mentorship group. I thought and, I recognized your uh, Brightline Investment Group. I know I've seen it in MFM. Before. Yeah, I think I've talked to you there on some other breakouts. So yeah. anyway, so that's uh, that's me. I'm So now I'm playing matchmaker between investors and deal sponsors and uh, just getting it going. I'm in the middle of finalizing the uh, paperwork, the legal, getting the LLCs transferred over. And I work with Mauricio and uh, Bethany over at 
premier law group for that. Yeah, Mauricio's so, great too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a huge fan of Mauricio's. I see his uh, syndications and when I miss it, not his syndications, his, uh, his meetup. And when I yeah. miss it, I always see the replay. He always sends us the replay through email. Um, so yeah, he's great. I, I love it. I love the replays because he some, yeah. usually he will actually go and summarize the main points and it just makes it more efficient to go. Yeah, you could, always, you could always come back and just watch the replay and get the whole gist of it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us and, and thank you, Angel and, and everyone else who, who joined us today. Cause it's been a great, uh, it's been a great evening. I've had a lot of fun. Um, anybody have any deals they're, they're uh, currently working on or, or looking for any uh, possible team members or anything you'd like to share with the, the rest of the group? I'd like to have your contact information. Oh yeah. You know what? I haven't shared my stuff here. Let me go ahead and do that. For sure. Um, and we then have an also, unit under contract right now, but that's, I mean, we just finished due diligence and now we're trying to get the account to where people can wire money so we can start raising. <laughs> that's the one you're, you're about to close by before the end of the year. Yeah. We're working hard to get it closed before the end of the year. And it's the lender says that they can make it happen. So it's on us. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing when it comes to contracts, excuse me, I try to push the contracts like you wouldn't believe. I try to make them go fast. Like if, if it's, if, if you give me a document, you're like, Oh, I need you to sign this. You'll have in the next 10 minutes. Like yeah. that's how I am. You know, like I gotta be thorough. I gotta be quick about it. Um, so yeah. Um, Here's, here's the problem that I keep ha having, having. So like I was telling Aaron before, I haven't quite um, gotten my whole team together. I do have most of my team and I have, you know, previous experience in joint ventures. Um, I think I brought that up once in your, your meetup, Angel, um, uh, in, the, in your summit, I'm sorry, in your summit. But I, what I was saying is um, you definitely, oh yeah, I had a deal. The deal was amazing it was like a thousand units come across my desk and this was in texas and you know to be honest i was still a little i was still coming off because i was sick for a little bit so i was just starting to recuperate and i started doing everything i can to make the deal work i reached out to some of my people and i just took so long um that i ended up missing that opportunity and mind you i would have been a capital raiser on it and mind you over a thousand deals. So when we're talking about like the kind of uh, profits that you can make um, and the, the fees that you could charge, you're looking at, you know, at least 2%. Um, needless to say, that would have been a, a career changer for me. <laughs> and, and, and for most people, you know, that would have been a great profit. So uh, that being said, what I'm trying to convey is that I think, you know, having your team ready to go so that when you do get a deal, you could strike on it immediately is paramount. Um, so that's something that um, I'm still striving to get my team together. Um, and as we're putting my information here in the contact, uh, please feel free to reach out. And let's see here. Oh yeah, and then for everyone who's left their contact info, either myself or someone from uh, Multifamily Investor Nation, or PassiveInvesting.com, which is uh, basically they're one and the same, um, we'll be reaching out to you as well. Um, yeah, so I just put my contact info, uh, Rick. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, my pleasure. And um, nice desk setup. Everyone, by the way, has really nice uh, setup. I really like the way you guys do your desk areas, your backgrounds, looks really cool. Um, and so I'm going to try, I have a wholesaler. I'm going to try to uh, get another deal um, come across my desk. If I do get one, is anybody interested in a property in Georgia, 100 to 200 units? Show of hands. Which part of Georgia? Uh, it'll either be Atlanta proper or a uh, primary market. Like it won't be a tertiary, maybe secondary. Because I'm interested in that whole corridor from Chattanooga down to Atlanta. Oh, that's a great area for sure. Atlanta to um, Chattanooga. Yeah, that's a great area. And that area is still um, gentrifying. It's still growing. Definitely a lot of room to, to build. 
Um, and Rick, I don't know if you caught it, but he's also um, he's he's also a realtor broker. Like he can take oh. care of that piece too. Thank you. Yeah. So I've you know I've done uh, back well back in like 2001. I bought my own my very first experience with the multifamily. I bought my very own five unit. Um, and that was a uh, on my own, and then a second one after that was a joint venture, and uh, that and real estate as a broker for over twenty years uh, is the experience that I bring to the table. Um, so, yep. and I, you know, I've also raised capital um, on a San Antonio deal. Um, that deal did not go through. I call it the one that that got away, but we did. Uh, I did have the experience of raising capital and 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 uh, looking forward to doing that again uh, shortly. So how do you, how do you do that for investors? You just send their money back? What do you mean? Like for investors that had already wired money before it um, stopped moving forward. Do you just send their money back? The deal? Back? Yeah, yeah. After, yeah, after a while, that's exactly what you gotta do. You gotta send everybody their money back. Um, I forgot what it's called now. Um, the, the program that they use, investor, I can't think of the name right now, but they basically use that same investor portal. <clears throat> Invest next. Invest next. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly the one I was looking for, Aaron. And Aaron, now I know where, where you look familiar from is I saw you, if I'm not mistaken, in Angel's meetup one time as well <laughs> on a Monday. Because um, I remember you said you were a firefighter then. I feel like this is my first one with you guys. <laughs> I don't the know. first meetup ever? No, not the first meetup ever, but... Yeah. This may be my second online one. I've been doing in-person ones, but I got you. I just know that I saw you because you I remember because you mentioned that you were a firefighter. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um but yeah. Um, so where were we? Where were we talking about? Uh Calmago says he's trying to get back into the meeting and it won't let him in. I don't think he's using the red link because it would show up here. Um, let me see, because I have you know how you have different screens on these MacBooks. Mm -hmm. Let me see if it's in another screen somewhere. Well, that's the first problem. You got a Mac book. Why? <laughs> Why? I didn't drink the apple Kool-Aid. <laughs> you know, I never did myself. Here's how I came into it. This is a funny story. Quick story. My son had a deal where he got three phones for the price of one. And we all got iPhones, right? All right. So I'm in there. And then my job gets me the MacBook Pro for work. And then afterward, I'm like, I think I'm going to keep using this computer because now I got the hang of it. For the most part, <laughs> there's a lot to learn. It's with this hard computer. to switch up. Yeah, because there's like a hundred screens on. Like I got two monitors. I got my PC here, and then I got a, a big monitor on the side, and it's hard to know which screen I'm actually working on at all times. You know. Anywho, um, you guys, that's all I have for today. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Um, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn, and just so you know, also this recording will be on my youtube channel as well um you could find me on cardos d renoso on linked on youtube as well okay all righty if there's nothing uh else anybody well, else if, did I, aaron did you want me to talk about our first deal oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. go 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 oh yeah because i want to hear it too yeah <laughs> i wanted to hear about it I have, okay i have like um Ten little minutes of my toddler's okay. bedtime. I can do it in up. ten minutes. Yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so we got an SMS blast that had two properties, and they were in Wichita Falls. And I was like, "Hey, I've never talked to a broker. Might as well call." <laughs> so I called. Never, I had never really talked to a broker before then, and he didn't know that his phone had answered. His earbuds were around his neck, so I'm like, "Hello, hello." And finally, he's like, "Oh, I didn't know anybody had called," and I'm like, "Oh, hello." I called. Um, and so we sort of set an appointment for us to go look at the properties. Um, but it was really funny because I'd never set an appointment before. Jason still had a W2 and Jason's my husband. And I was like, so I guess put us down for lunch on this day. And if I don't call you back, we'll stick with it. Um, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to say things like that to a broker, <laughs> but I did and it worked. Um, and we went and looked at the properties and then the people that we were originally going to do the deal with that, that group fell apart. Um, and so then we wound up getting in to it. We wound up still being able to put in LOIs. Um, and so then there was a second team. 
Um, and we went through, I don't even know, 12 or 15 loan products for real wow. and couldn't get a loan product. And it became very risky. People were getting really upset. And those are the moments when you really find out what people's risk tolerances are. Um, my husband mm. and I had $100,000 on the deal that had gone hard day one. We were not walking away. Yeah. Um, so the second team imploded. <laughs> <laughs> and there was only like $250,000 that had been raised and it had been raised from Jason's family. Um, so again, we had to get the deal across. <laughs> um, and so we had a third team that got put together and the third team is what got it across the finish line on December 17th of 21. We had to backfill it. But by the time it was all said and done, Jason and I had raised about a million dollars in our first race. And so we, we got it across the finish line. We got it funded. And we started getting to collect an asset management fee because we got it funded and we got our acquisition fee. And so it was really, it was really awesome, but it was, it was tough. Um, and so just some to keep kind of advice on the side is have some backup GPs if you need them. That's what I was going to say. So every time it was a different team, like you replaced the whole group of investors. Jason and I were the only two that stayed the whole time. Wow. So. And it, the, the funny part of that story, and it kind of coincides with my story, is that the first investment uh, that I was raising for here, uh, the syndication, well, never mind that, right, Angel? Don't tell that part of the story. It doesn't Better not. matter. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> anyway, there's there's more to the story, but but that's that's a great story because it's hard when you have a whole team of, of investors already, and then to change that and say, okay, I'm going to start with a new group now. And then even a second time to do that, that's unheard of. So, I mean, you really were well, dedicated to that deal. We basically, yeah, Jason and I were basically lead sponsors on our own first deal. And now we're pretty much lead sponsors on our second deal. And so we may never know what it's like to be on a GP team and not be like the main GPs. Right. Did so you, you just have to keep paying with... for extensions. Oh, yeah. By the time we got it across, we were 185000 in. Oh, wow. That, so was, by was, the time, a, that was when we created the 13 because we had paid, we had 100,000 that went hard. And then, oh, wait, it was more than that because each extension was 50,000. And then I had to negotiate a weekend extension that we paid 10,000 for. Was this recourse or non recourse? Um, non recourse bridge. Um, the one we're doing uh -huh. right now is a recourse bank loan. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. Once you get a deal under contract and you close it, then you, you build a track record. And then what Michael Blanc calls the, the law of the first deal, yeah. that once you do the first one, they just start trickling in. And, and it's easier because now they know that you could execute on, on the transaction. Zero, zero to one is definitely the hardest. The hardest. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. And I, I Angel, hope I don't ever forget that. <laughs> Angel, can I get your uh, contact info? So I can... Yeah, it should sure. Be the chat. Um, Try to chat. see. I think if you put it in the chat box, it should be there still. Uh, not, not if you came in late, but I can. Oh, yeah, if you came in later, it probably stopped. Yeah, that's true. Let's see what we um, got here. And then I'm going to take this one off. By the way, do you guys see my background screen or no? Uh, yeah. Okay, it's this is my uh, yeah. investment page. Very Kenneth. nice. Thank you. Kenneth yeah, Major Investment Capital LLC. Thank you for that. Wait, uh, I see the red above your head. What's it say right behind it? Or, oh, oh, are you? This is Multi Family Investor Nation. Oh, but that's not what you're talking about. Oh, no, I have another page. Let me see if I could show it to you here. Um, kind of share my screen. So I just put all of mine in Word, and every time there's a meetup, I just cut and paste. Dude, Angel, I really got to start doing <laughs> that. I, because... I, got it. Huh? I like this. Well, and Aaron, yeah. you know to hit the three dots, and it'll save everything. Out how time, right? See, none of that works for me, because I'm just using my iPhone. <laughs> oh, I see. So I, yeah, so I just do screenshots and I always you wonder what the links. that, tell me about it. No, I get the links. They just come in as a photo. But they don't come as links. They're not hyperlinks. But it doesn't matter anymore because the, the photos are so good that it still acts as if it's a link. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah That's because you, you drank the apple. You drank the apple tea. Apple only apple. only for this. My, <laughs> this is the big debate between me and my uh, my daughter is that I'll have the, I, 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 Mac we have iPads and stuff. for the kids because that's, I think they're easier, they're better tablets and they're easier to navigate. I have been thinking about doing that because I'm also a big photographer. So my biggest screen here is actually my photography setup and it's very high. Power, camera do you have? I have an Olympus 
um, OM1. Well, yeah, we have a we have a Canon 5D Mark III. You know, that's what I was going down to get the 5D Mark IV. And my guys at the sh shop said, look, we know you've been saving for three years for this. And we know <laughs> you love it. But don't get this. Because for your application as a wildlife photographer, you need to at least yeah. take a look at this Olympus. And then when I found out how many people with Canons and Icons were putting those on the shelves to get this because it's so much smaller, lighter, and the lenses and everything, it's like, that's what I got. And I love it. Cool. And I and I just like it. Literally, I'd save for years all my rewards points and my credit cards. That's to awesome. get the 5d mark four and then they talked me out of it so well but that's cool that the, the, the people there understood what you needed like and i've had cannons for years for, for 40 years i've had cannons i've well, had I like cannons. You just say that you shoot people with a cannon we're still yeah. letting we're still letting people in so there's more people joining us so that's great um i was gonna say i have the sony z v e10 uh it's a good blogging camera I love it because it's really light. You could take it anywhere and it's pretty easy to use. Um, I'm just learning it though. It's, I'm still learning it. Um, yeah, so that's that's a shutter of this. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Mirrorless? Uh, mirrorless, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, so much lighter. That's a good camera. That's a good camera, yeah. I like this one, yeah. It was hard to find because for some reason they were out of stock and it took me a while to find it. <clears throat> Yeah, everything is hard. Oh yeah, in this market. Hey, it was great we're... to meet you guys. I hope Same here. Uh, you jump too. on the next call with y'all. I look yeah. forward to it. Thank you so much. Be well. All right. Take care now. So, so whose actual meetup is this? Is this yours, Angels, or is this no, yours? It's <laughs> okay, okay. It kind of seemed like it was Angels for a second, right? <laughs> Well, I'm only kidding. because only because she sent the link over to yeah. Douglas and he and I, we have a weekly call, just the two of us, where we go over things. And uh, so she sent that and I said, well, let's go. <laughs> I'm yeah. always up to meet new people. And, yeah. Yeah. In so. this business, you always got to be uh, networking, right? Get the word yeah. out. Well, especially now that I'm a fund manager, I've got to have a good, I, have, I need to have a good uh, deal flow quality projects as well as working on the investor side so widen the, widen the horizon yeah and, and how are you going to balance that out so is like either yourself or the partner going to be the one in charge of one thing or you're both sharing it or it's just me oh it's just you i'm acquiring this from somebody else that already had the fund for a couple of years and nice their syndicators they didn't really want to be a fund manager and that's a big story behind that but Anyway, so I got it for a lot less than I could go do a new one. And this already has some deals and investors in it. So That's awesome, right? Just, just a wow. way to sort of force myself into this niche of being a capital raiser. Now I have an actual platform. No more excuses. I got to do it now. That's awesome. Well, let me tell you, you have some capital raisers on this call right now. So if you need any help with that, let us know. Yeah, well, I'm in a... As I mentioned, I, I'm part of the raise masters thing. So I've got yeah. people there that have raised 150, 600. Yeah. I mean, there's some big shooters Easy. in there, but, yeah. but they all started with their first deal. And that's what I'm doing. Amen. So, Kudos but yeah, I, I appreciate your sentiment though, because it's, I'm not too proud to help, to accept help. And I'm not too um, arrogant to offer my help. You know, like Douglas was offering, was saying, Hey, help me with this thing and I'll give you it. And I said, no, I'll do it for free. I don't. I just need to get experience. I need to gain some momentum in this space. And I've been in this for a year and a half, but, and I've, I've LP'd in some deals, but I need to get, you know, more active. And so I'm not trying to make a killing. Uh, I'm not trying to make anything. I'm just trying to get experience, build relationships, you know, that all other stuff will all come. I, yeah, I came from an place. industry. I came in an industry developing power plants where it would take three to five years to do one deal, you know, um, so, and then I was in assisted living where it could take us two years to get the entitlements and a zoning. So I am a long-term player, <laughs> you know, I'm not a short-term guy. Yeah. And, and same here. I think the same thing with myself, like I'm trying to build relationships for years to come. It can't be something where you're in it, you do a deal and you're out um, because you'll starve to death. And not only that, it's, it's, it's not the way I believe that this industry is set up, right? It's kind of like uh, we got to help each other out as we come along. So um, that's kind of like why I joined, why I started um, uh, being a co-organizer for this group is that I was learning a lot from Dan, Dan Hanford, 
Um, and I wanted to be able to give that back um, and help others also come up, right? And and teach others so they could also be syndicators. And so that's my motivation, you know, is, is to syndicate deals and to help others do the same. That's great. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it's really a pleasure to meet you. It's good to see you again, Angel. Sorry, I missed your thing this morning. I didn't want to miss, but all of a sudden, Raise Masters put a thing in that slot and I'm paying them big bucks and I don't want to miss, you know, pay. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So otherwise I would not miss yours. I love your group too. So I'll, I'll show up when I can. Does it, does it go over an hour? Yours? Does it? Yeah. We usually for... after party. Um, I might, I might be able to make some of those because this is pretty yeah. rigid one hour. So we'll yeah, see. No, we're, we, we after party. We're not rigid with our time. <laughs> 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 I need to be better about it. Coach T says that, that I need to be more this is when we go, we're going to do it from here to here, but. Well, still, as long as you can define, get your content then. And then, you know what? Sometimes your best, some of my best interactions have been in these informal, everybody else dwindles away and you got two or three, four people and you can really get to know people more and feel comfortable. I agree. And, yeah. so well, I, like, I, in the after party, like if the, if our, like with Thousand Mary, when it was going haywire and things were going sideways or when Jason was gone this summer, like. I vent. That's how I deal with stress is I vent. And if you were in the after party, you got to, you got intimate details on what was going on with the property. <laughs> like it or not, you're part of my tribe. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but part of that too, it's kind of a detriment because I assume that I'm really communicating with my investors because there'll be a few that stick around for the after party. And those guys, they know everything that's going on. But <laughs> if you're not staying for the after party, or you're not coming to the meetup you might not be getting a lot of information from me except for like the, you know, the monthly newsletter or the quarterly newsletter or whatever. So right. I need to, I need to do a better job. I need to figure out some systems for it so that all the members of the GP team are collecting things during the entire quarter so that we're not scrambling at the end, trying that to figure out what needs to go in the newsletter. Yeah. See, yeah, this is my concern part. as a fund manager. I need to be collecting because, you know, when you have a bunch of deals in there, and sometimes, the these, time. sometimes these GPs are kind of slow at getting stuff together. And it's like, I don't want to be marred. I don't want my brand to be pulled down because of their lack of, mm -hmm. you know, being yeah. communicative and taking care of their investors afterwards. And so that's why one of the best talks that I've heard recently in the last month, let's say, uh, and I think this might have been over at Tim Mai's capital or the virtual raise party. And he had a guest, Alex, and I can't remember his last name, kind of a Russian sounding guy. But Hogan? I don't think it was that. But this guy, he's raised, he's raised big, big time. You know, mm. wait, uh, multiple, mul I mean, over a hundred, maybe multiple hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. And he says his most important thing, the deal's fine. That's you can work through a deal, find the good ones. He says the most important thing for him, and he spends a lot of time and effort, is vesting the GPs. Yeah. And he'll so he'll show up, he'll fly across the country to have in meeting in person meetings, and he'll show up at properties unannounced and it, just to test, just to see are these people, are they going to run this deal, this project, this uh, oh, yeah. property, yeah. the way that our investors deserve. And once he's got people that he knows are solid then he can go and bring in some really good investors so um because it gives them the confidence you know to, to know that they'll be taken care of so that's, that's just a freebie <laughs> but alex materko that sound that sounds more like it yeah I, he's the I ceo just, of streams development i don't know about that i mm. i got it this is the other thing i go to so many of these it's like all of my raise yeah, masters, keep track ones, of I, I, I put all my raise masters in here. I have another one just for my, all my multifamily mindset, but then I have these random ones, and I, you know, I need to I have, have a like, spiral. Maybe, I have a yellow spiral. Mine is a legal need, pad. Everywhere I go, a legal pad. I need my random book because what I what I end up doing is just getting a piece of blank copy paper and doing that. And then I try to clip those together, but that's not very efficient. Well, Jason. So, so Jason buys me this iPad that has like a pencil and all this fa fancy stuff. And like, I don't ever take it because I've got my like paper and I've got my head yeah. and yes. I've got everything in my head and I just keep it in my head. But I'm starting to notice that like before I could give you a first and last name. And now it's like, I'll come up with the last name and I'm like, man, what was that person's first name? What was their first name? What was their first name? And so it's getting harder. It just yeah. like in the old days. <laughs> 
I know people, well, my wife, she used to know everybody's phone number. That she, like, you don't have to dial the numbers anymore. I think now you don't have to dial. You forget everything. I think that's number. why we don't remember numbers. The but, same but now our phones remember it. So it doesn't, mm -hmm. we get lazy. You know, I don't even know her number. <laughs> I know mine. And that's really it. And my kids, yeah. even one or two of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's anyway, that's sidetrack. <laughs> I was just noticing that um, we had Dan Freidenberg. And I saw he, him pop up. Yeah. yeah, he popped up like three or four times. Yeah. And I, I kept trying to get him involved and I just saw him on his computer and he just, I don't know what's up with him. Uh, he was uh, here for support. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. And he's reached out to me too. Uh, some of the only people that, that have reached out, you know, Angel, um, uh, Dan and, you know, and Dan uh, Hanford as well. So, you know, I'm really grateful, you know, to me, I just need two, maybe three great friends. And I mean, I'm the luckiest man alive because, um, Honestly, I'm not a I'm not a very sociable person. Um, I'm, I'm like what I like to call an introverted extrovert. Um, you know, I could get out there, I could talk, I could whatever. But for the most part, you know, I'm very uh, private. I'm very to myself, and I, I will never go out there and be like, oh, you know, I have this problem, or it's just not my way. Like I'll just swallow it, you know, and and learn from it and, and try to tackle it on myself is what I do, you know? And, you know, part of syndications, you got to know how to be a team player. You got to try to open it up to other people. And I, I still got to learn how to do that a little bit more. I've always been very much in control. You know what I mean? So I'm I learning. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. My yeah. best friend, I, I don't even know if I would have acknowledged at the time that he was my best friend, but in hindsight, he was. And I remember he commented to my ex-wife, then she was my wife, mm -hmm. that I just wouldn't open up. We'd be, we'd be driving on a long trip. and I just, I wasn't a talker. I, I, I mean, I'd talk chit chat, mm -hmm. you know, how's the weather, but. I never shared any feelings or life goals or anything like that. I was just more sit in the corner and observe everybody else. Something has shifted within me at some point because I'm still, that's still the natural me. But I guess just through my career, I've been forced into situations where I've learned how. And so now I kind of have it. I call it my extrovert channel. I can turn it on there. And I can stay in that for a while. It's it's exhausting to an introvert, you know. Then then I have to turn it off and go sit in a corner somewhere. Just I have my I have I have my grandma's literally my my grandma's recliner in my room next to my bed, and I'll go sit there just like you know just re recover. But there is something valuable, and I'll tell you. Yesterday reinforced this even more. I attended for two or three hours online via youtube the memorial service for a close friend of mine from college who oh, was wow. killed in a tragic accident recent a couple months ago sorry for your loss man yeah thanks and so it was in a church and they had multiple cameras and after the thing was over they kept showing scenes you know the camera would move and, and you could so you could see who's there and and it zoom in oh so and so's there oh so and so oh i haven't talked to them in years so I literally took my little paper out and started writing down names of the people that I was seeing that, that had made the effort to be there and, and just reflecting on some of these people that some of them I've talked to maybe two or three years ago, maybe some of it's been 10 or 20, but it's like, it really makes you think, especially in an event like that, where someone is lost tragically that everybody loved and he just supported everybody in so many ways and it's like I, I thought about this like man I would I would love to be remembered this well at my own funeral but besides that it made me stop and think you know we need to be taking care of these relationships that we've had from along the way not just we can build relationships with the capital rate in the cap the investors that's fine and that needs to be authentic for sure mm -hmm. but there's people that are closer to us in our lives some of which maybe we haven't even realized my best friend i, I declared him to be my fr best friend a couple of years ago and here he's actually been this is a different best friend <laughs> probably for 20 or 30 years he's been my best friend but i didn't even acknowledge it or realize it so finally i declared it and i told it to him you know and, and um 
I just think we need to do a better job of remembering who in our lives are really important and tell them how you feel about them. Tell them that you love them. How, tell them how much of an impact they've had on your life. You know, while we have a chance, because it could be snuffed out just like that. Yeah. Like this guy, head on collision, boom, he's gone. Here today, gone tomorrow sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so crazy, man, because especially, you know, with COVID and stuff, like, and I know we're getting sentimental, but I feel like for some reason I have to go, I have to go along with you here because like I was telling Angel, I recently went through COVID and then I had pneumonia that was like an aftermath of COVID. And I really had like a near death experience, like really. And, you know, I was there and my wife was there with me, but it almost felt like, damn, I don't have anybody in life, right? Like my family, they're all in Florida, right? So I'm in Georgia and it's my wife and myself. My son is now living in Alabama. You know, it's we're empty nesters. Um, and I just, through COVID, like through that near-death experience, like it wasn't COVID that, you know, it was actually the pneumonia, but it's just, I started realizing just how important it is to have people around you that actually care. Because yes. I've had, you know, on Facebook and, and you know, I've had 6,000 plus friends on Facebook Wow. But I, I could probably name two of them, right? You know, mm -hmm. or a few, right? Um, but I really feel that it's it's important to have that real core friendship. And to be honest, I haven't had that, honestly. And that's why back in the days, my 20-year-old friends, I had to 86 them, right? Because they they didn't want to come up and yeah. they were they were pulling me back. Right. And and I was trying to bring them up with me. Like I said, through the meetups and everything, teaching them what I've learned. And, you know, they were just trying to, hey, let's go party. Let's go have fun. Let's go do. And I'm like, dude, I need to focus for this. This is for me. This is for my family. This is for people I haven't even met yet. Yeah. I'm helping others out in this process. That's why I can't just stop. Sometimes yeah. I want to. Sometimes I want to just be like, you know what? I'll just work a nine to five the rest of my life. But then I've worked nine to five times. So that's not for me. <laughs> that's not yeah. For me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can lift, yeah. you can lift people. I'm I'm a Christian and mm -hmm. every morning I pray you know, before I even get out of bed. My, we have devotions with my wife and stuff. And one of my constant appeals to God is give me opportunities. I mean. Who would sure we'd all like to be rich and have a billion dollars assets under management, but that's not really what counts. And it's gonna all burn anyway, or we're yeah. gonna be buried below, won't know it, whatever. But yeah. um, but people do matter. And as a Christian, I think we all have hope in a future for a better situation down the road. And I just want to lift people now for the sake of lifting them now. And then who knows if that's gonna help them be in a better place for their own life, or then they can lift somebody else up and and in, the, and in the process of doing that, it's helped me to have richer relationships with them because I didn't really need a lot of people. And I was, I've been terrible at staying in contact with my friends. In fact, after this, after this thing, watching my, the memorial service, mm -hmm. I composed a text and I sent it to my best uh, friend, college roommate and stuff, mm -hmm. texted it to him. He called back within like five minutes and we talked for, you know, two and a half hours. And because I have been terrible about that and it's, there's no excuse. It's, it's just selfishness or fear or just don't put a priority on it or don't value the people, even though when you really sit and think about it, you can acknowledge intellectually, they're very valuable in my life, but okay, step up, show it, do something. And since I am a capital raiser, you know, I can also have this little slice of me over here going, well, who knows if that might help give me some investors, but that's, that's not the right reason to do it. And that's but, not the reason to do it. Exactly. No. So well, but you, like, I think though, you noticed something too, like when your college roommate called you, y'all didn't miss a beat. Yeah. And I call that continuity of story. I don't think it's so much about, Hey, I need to follow up with this person every two weeks. Or I need to follow up with this person every month. You have to make sure that when you follow up, there's still continuity of story so that right. the, the conversation hasn't been lost. The conversation hasn't dropped because if you can maintain continuity of story, it doesn't matter how much time there is in between it. That's exactly how it was with this friend. His name was Vince that was killed. 
I would go sometimes years in between and we'd see each other and we'd pick right up from where we left off and it was really great. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, yes, I agree with you. That's great to have. I mean, honestly, I, I hate to sound like the, but I just, my college friends and stuff, they weren't the, the greatest and like I said, I, I really wanted to help them come up with me. I, I was like, man, you guys got to learn this. We're going to invest together. We're going to work together. It'll be great. And they were just too busy, you know, and, and I'm hoping that someday. Everybody's on their own timeline too. Exactly. Yeah, and that's one right. thing, like sometimes I try to, I, I, I'm kind of get down on myself, like in the sense of like, damn Carlos, you know, you're at this age, you still haven't achieved what you wanted to achieve and what's taking you so long and will you ever do it? And and what keeps me going is that I'm the kind of person I'm not going to stop till I achieve whatever it is. Yep. I just won't, you know, and right. I've seen that with Angel too, with her first deal and everything else. Once you're like a bulldog, once you bite down on it, you got to, you got to try to hold on to it and not let it go. Uh, because if you let it go, you lose everything. Yeah. And, yeah. That's a gift to have that tenacity. You, I believe that that's a gift that you have to have that, that a very, that's a great point right there, Rick, for real. Well, cause I know people, in fact, I have one of my friends. Oh, I, I, he's not a close, close friend, but we met in business oh, 30 years ago. Wow. And I call him my junkyard dog friend because he will, if he finds a project or an opportunity somewhere, he will grab that, shake it for all it's worth and won't let it go. And he'll find ways to tweak it. And can he get it? reshape it um and he hasn't really been very successful but he is the most tenacious person i've ever known <laughs> and so if you can do that maybe have a little bit more discernment than he's had as far as who you're going to work with and the kinds of deals you do <laughs> i think you really have something get these good partners that you vet beforehand <laughs> i appreciate that thanks man it's really yeah. cool yeah. All right. So I, I know we all got uh, other things to do, but I really yep. seriously want to thank you guys uh, for joining us today for multifamily uh, meetup, uh, Investor Nation multifamily meetup. Um, I've I've learned a lot from both of you and uh, from Aaron as well. And I'm the kind of person I'm like a sponge. I try to learn from everybody. Um, and I think the smartest people in life tend to be that way. Not to give myself kudos, but I'm just saying that you learn, you you, you realize you could learn from everybody. Absolutely. Um, and as long as you have that open mind uh, available, I think uh, we're all going to be successful. So kudos to you guys. Keep up the great work. I hope to see you guys back here. And I hope to hear about your future deals and your fund and your uh, closing this year, Angel. Um, call me so we can celebrate. We'll have a drink or something <laughs> virtually or something. Say hi to Jason for me. Uh, best to your family and your children. And uh, guys, God's blessing. Oh, Thank you. Jason says Thank hi. You. Jason! <laughs> it, it, is this the same link, a re recurring link? That yeah, I can it's get a recurring link time? every month. Yes, okay. Sir. okay, great. So it's it's once a month on this first? What right, is the this? first Monday of the first month. First Monday, okay. Unless it falls on a holiday, then, then it'll be the following uh, Monday. Okay, all right. I'm going to write that down. Thank you so much. Really, Thank it was you a pleasure to, to meet you. Good to see you, Angel, too. Pleasure. Thank you, guys. Have a great Bye evening. Bye, guys. T take care. Bye, now. Alrighty, that was awesome, awesome, awesome. But I don't think the breakout rooms stay here. Rick, you're still here. I'm trying to leave. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it says leave breakout room, so we're in a breakout room. Now I'm yeah, going to yeah. leave meeting. Okay, goodbye. All right, peace. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was Multifamily Investor Nation Monday Meetups uh, with your host, yours truly, Carlos Di Reynoso. I had a great time. Uh, a lot of our, uh, a lot of my friends visited. Um, a lot of my investor friends were here, uh, so we did have some investor cameo appearances. I thank you uh, so much, you guys, for your support. Um, you've been such great friends to me, and I can't even express how much it means to me. It means the world to me. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me uh, and for this meetup. I thank you for your continued support. I hope you'll join us next month where our topic is going to probably be on raising capital for your multifamily deals. I uh, hope you'll join us for that one. And uh, here's uh, my investment page. If you go online, 
uh, just search for Canis Major Investment Capital LLC. You'll find out a lot more about myself. Uh, also, feel free to go to my YouTube channel at Carlos D. Reynoso. Uh, that's Carlos D. Reynoso at YouTube.com. Again, uh, thank you so much. There's a hundred places you could have been today, uh, but you spent it uh, with us and uh, had a great time. And I hope to see you next time uh, for Multifamily Investor Nation, Canis Major Investment Capital. This is Carlos D. Reynoso signing off. Take care, guys. Peace.